welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors, and today I'm continuing my series on how to make the most out of your clarinet reads. Today's video covers the basics, very simple stuff. Many of you may know this, but it could be a handy review. I'm going to talk about the best way to break in new reads so that they last longer and play well for you, the best way to store your reads so that they last longer and play well for you, and also some really basic pointers on how you can adjust the reeds on your mouthpiece to make them play a little bit better for you. So when you have a brand new reed, many people are not aware that they'll last longer and play better if we take a little time to break them in properly. And that knowledge isn't really shared very commonly. Many people just pick up a new reed and put it on the instrument and they play it for as long as they're playing. But that's not necessarily the best way to take care of your new reed. So I'm going to give you some guidelines that you can use, and if you try them out, you might find your reads do last longer. When you have a brand new read on day one, you should only play it for about 10 minutes or so. This is a really nice way for you to test out the read, see if you like how it plays out of the box. Um, a lot of people like to grade their reads, so what I'll do with my new reads is I'll make notes on the back side. Um, I might, I give it a plus sign if it's a little bit too stiff. I give it a minus sign if it's a little bit too weak, but maybe still usable. And I'll give it marks, an A, an A plus, a B. Hopefully it doesn't get any lower than that, but it's just a guideline for me. Day one, about 10 minutes. On day two, the next time I'm playing this brand new read, I'm going to play it for about 25 minutes. And I'm giving you some guidelines here. On day three, I'm going to play it for about 45 minutes. Now the reason that I'm being careful with it is that brand new piece of cane is quite porous and it gets waterlogged really quickly. And when it gets to that point, it's no longer playing very well for you. And playing on the reed when it is waterlogged can shorten its life. There's some visual clues if a reed that you're playing on is getting waterlogged. What you'll see when you look at the tip of it is that it starts to look kind of see-through, kind of dark looking. And on a brand new read, that'll happen really quickly. 10 minutes of playing, it's going to look see-through. So some reads might go a bit longer, but you can tell just by looking at it. Although the read will still play, it won't be sounding its best and you're gonna find it harder to play. So day one, about 10 minutes. Day two, about 25 minutes. Day three, about 45 minutes. After that point, a reed still only has what I call a daily maximum of sounding good. I've noticed on my reeds, it's about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Beyond that point, the reed doesn't play so well anymore. So if I have a two hour rehearsal, for sure I'm gonna play at least two reeds during that rehearsal. And there's always moments between pieces or a little break or something where you can change reeds in the middle of things. I personally find my reeds play best on about their third or fourth day. So that's just my opinion. If I have a big concert where I want to have some great reads, I'll make sure I've gone through this break-in process and then stop them at that point. So about day four is when I'm going to be performing on that read and expecting it to play its very best. Every day we play on a read, it actually gets a little bit softer. In two ways, actually. It will, um, it will soften up throughout our rehearsal. So after about 20 minutes of playing one read, it's softer than it was at the start of our session. It also, every day, just gets a little bit softer so that after two weeks of using one read, it will be softer than when we started. Sometimes a read just wears out because it's gotten too soft for us to use it well. There are some simple adjustments you can make to how you place your read on the mouthpiece that will help it respond better. And I do have another video that goes into this in some detail, so I'm just gonna give you a really quick version of it today because it's very useful to know. Let's say I have my clarinet mouthpiece here and I'm ready to put my reed on it. This being my um, contra contra profundo basso reed here. So as we know, we normally put the reed on the mouthpiece. Most of you have some system that you may follow. It might be that you line the tip of your reed up exactly with the tip of your mouthpiece. It might be that you line it up so you can see a bit of the black rim of the mouthpiece over top. All of those systems are reliable and they work, but they may not be best for your read. So here's a good guideline for you to follow. If you were to look at the top of your mouthpiece without a reed on it, it has this flat rail at the tip. And that's the part of the mouthpiece that the reed hits when it vibrates. 
when we blow our air properly across the clarinet, it vibrates really, really fast across that top of the mouthpiece. We could imagine it this way. The part of your reed that hits the very bottom of the rail is the part that affects how the reed performs as far as how thick it feels or how stiff it feels. If you're someone who places your reed low on the mouthpiece so that you can see black over top, it's just the very end of the reed that's touching that part of the rail, which is the thinnest part of the reed, because of course the reeds get thicker the lower down we go. If you have a reed that's a little bit resistant, a little hard to play, that's exactly how you should place it. If you have a reed that's a bit soft and you inch it up higher to be even with the top of the mouthpiece or even a little bit above it, we now, if I put my ligature on, clamp, I now have a lower part of the reed that's hitting that part of the rail and it's a little bit thicker and it makes my reed act a little bit stiffer. This is really useful in two ways. Remember I said after about 25 minutes of playing on one reed, it starts to soften up. Often during a practice session or rehearsal, I might start with my reed a little low, but after about 25 minutes, I'll notice that it's a blowing a little bit more easily. Maybe my high notes are sounding a bit brighter than I want. In an extreme case, as you may know from some of my other videos, if your reed's too soft, your high notes might not even come out well at all. Well, moving it up makes it act stiffer. And I'll do that in the middle of a session to make my reed last so that it's feeling comfortable and sounding good for my whole practice session. So you can experiment with that, and in fact you should. And as you start doing this, you'll start to get a feel yourself for where your reeds feel best. And that can change day to day. An older reed probably has to sit higher most of the time because it's gotten softer. New reeds sometimes are a little bit stiff, so we may generally have them a bit lower. But you can have some fun doing this because it really can make your reeds sound better and play better for you as you go. When you first pull a reed out of your case or out of the box and you're about to play it, it really should be wet. A reed plays much better when it's moist and it will vibrate better. There's two ways to get it wet and this is a little controversial. I've had one teacher who told me one way was absolutely right and the other way was absolutely wrong and I've had another teacher tell me quite the reverse. So there are strong opinions about this. I personally don't have a strong opinion. I'm gonna share with you what works for me. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. There are comment boxes below this video. So if you have uh, thoughts one way or another, I'd love to hear from you. One way is to take a little cup of water and put the tip of the reed in and let it get wet. This is especially handy if you're just testing a bunch of new reeds and you wanna just play them for that first day to get a feel for them. I'll sometimes put three or four reeds in and just play them very briefly and start sorting them into the very good pile, the pretty good pile, the I think if I work on this reed it'll be pretty good, and the this reed is kindling pile. So the water is really helpful for that. I use it quite a bit. Some people insist this leads to waterlogged reeds that get damaged. Some people insist that this is the only way you should get your reeds wet because the other common way, I'm sure most of you have tried before, is we simply pull the reed out of the case and we get it wet in our mouth, popsicle style. Taking care, of course, not to damage the tip of the reed by jamming it up against our teeth. Those who are against this way claim that our saliva has digestive enzymes and that starts to break down the reed faster than if we're soaking it in water. And that's probably the reason reeds do get softer is our digestive enzymes are slowly eating away at them bit by bit. So I tried being scientific with this once. I sort of went two weeks where all I did was soak them in water. And then I went two weeks where all I did was put them in my mouth. And I have to be honest, I didn't notice any difference in how long the reeds lasted or how they responded. Maybe I wasn't rigorous enough with my testing, but it was inconclusive enough that I kind of feel like Personally, either way is fine, and I don't have a strong opinion about it. Other than that, it has to get wet before you put it on your mouthpiece. When you take your reed off of your mouthpiece and you're ready to put it away, I do have a helpful pointer for you. Um, it helps if the reed dries a little bit before you put it in the case, but I have a caveat here. It needs to dry with the flat side up, so I've just put it on a little table here. So you can see how I have the flat side up. One of our challenges with cane reeds is that they tend to warp by this wet dry, wet dry process. And just like when you get paper wet, it will ripple, reeds can do that a bit too. Um, 
the edges tend to curl up. So if a reed warps a little bit so the edges curl in on the flat side, that's not going to affect its response in a negative way very much at all. If the middle of the reed swells up so that the edges are then maybe leaking air out, that's a problem. I have other videos that address that and I'll put links in the write-up um, below this video to some of my other reed videos so you can, if you're interested in more advanced ways to fix your reeds, you can take a look at those. Anyway, we put it flat side up. So one way to do that is simply if you're using a few reeds in one rehearsal, put them safely aside on a table. After they've had a chance to dry 10 or 15 minutes, they go into your reed case. If it's right at the end of your practice session, take your reed off first, set it down, go ahead, swab out your clarinet, dry it out, all the usual things, and then this will be the last thing that you put away. It's a small thing, but it does help your reed respond better and last a bit longer. All right, one last little bit of reed care for today's video, and that's how you should store your reeds. Most of us buy reeds that come in some kind of case. Let's say it comes in a little plastic holder like this. Well, these are great for shipping the reeds from the factory to the store, to your home or wherever you're playing with them. They protect the tip from getting cracked, so they do serve a purpose. However, that's kind of what they're designed for. They don't help a reed to um, stay flat. They don't prevent it from warping. And they're just, in general, there are better reed systems out there. So I also have a link in today's write-up to just a one-page handout that has some read information from this video and some of my other read videos, and it'll give you some recommendations. I highly recommend you invest in a better read case. There are various levels of them, and I've recommended some specific brands that I really like. Um, the, on the more fancy level, we have a case something like this. This happens to be a Selmer case, but there are many designed like this. There is a glass flat surface in here, glass or another material that holds it perfectly flat, so that when my reed is actually drying out after I've had my little short drying session, it's being pressed down onto the glass by some kind of cushy top that when I close it is going to hold this reed firmly in place. That's really important. They usually have some kind of air ventilation system in them so that your reeds aren't going to go moldy. There are some fancy cases that have humidity controls to really keep it at even humidity. That's all different options that you can go into. Where I live, we alternate between heavy, heavy rainy days and very dry days, so our ambient humidity is always changing. So there are some people that I know who really like to try and control that by having their reeds in a sealed plastic bag or having a, a, a monitor in there that tells them what the humidity is. That works. Personally, I find that the reed will adapt to the humidity of the room pretty quickly when we're playing it, so I'm not too concerned about that. I just kind of take note that when it's really humid out, um, our reeds respond a little differently than when it's really dry. They act stiffer in dry climates and a little bit softer in wet climates, which means if your weather's changing a lot, your reeds might slightly feel stiffer or softer as the weather changes. And that's fine. Usually in one of my cases, I'll have some reeds that are a little bit soft, some reeds are a little bit stiff, and then as the weather changes, I can favor which ones seem to work best. In between the reed case that comes with the reeds and something like this, which is probably $40 or so, there are some medium ones that run in the $20 range that achieve some of the same things. They keep your reeds flat, they store them nicely, and I've got some recommendations for you if you look at the handout that comes with this video. So that's some really simple things about reeds, but they really help your reeds to last longer. And I think that's important. We want to make sure that if we're using reeds, they're giving us good service and we're not getting frustrated by them. So we're going to break them in gradually over about a four-day period. We're not going to play one reed too much in one day. We're going to have let them dry a little bit flat side up when we take them off. We're going to experiment with the height that we use when we're placing them on the mouthpiece just to help them respond better during a practice session. And then we're going to make sure we have a good storage system to store our reeds well. If they're not warping, they're going to last longer for you and they're going to play better. So reeds can still warp in a fancier case, but at a much lower rate. So it is worth the investment. I hope this gives you some great ideas. I'd love for you to try these things out, and especially if you haven't been breaking in your reeds through some kind of graduated process, to find out if you think your reeds last longer. The other thing related to that 
is I would say it's also a great idea to always have two or three minimum reads on the go and rotating between them. They seem to last longer if they sometimes have a day or two off in the middle of your practice session. Instead of using one read until it's dead, use a few reads and rotate between them. Then you'll have a better sense when one is wearing out. I do like hearing from you, so I'd love for you to fill in some comments in the comments box below. Any thoughts you have about reads or questions about them? I look at those about twice a week and I'll fill in my responses to you. I also invite you, if you're not already a member of my Clarinet Mentors community, it's totally free to join. You need to go to www.learnclarinetnow.com and just sign up. It's free registration. I will send you about every two or three weeks a newsletter that has an educational video like today's. I will also put in any interesting clarinet gadgets, clarinet conferences, clarinet whatever I've run across that I think might be of interest to you. And from time to time, I have special events, whether it's a live online lesson that you can take part in or a specialized course I've created, and I'll let you know about those things as well. So for the most part, you'll be getting great information like the ones you saw today, and it's a great chance for you to send me some feedback if you have any as well. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and I look forward to seeing you on another video soon.